how do you retrain your brain in this way yep. to like really deal with the lust and temptation at this point? Yeah. What, what does that look I'll like? I'll still be hunting. I'll be hunting every time I walk in the door. You hey, feel fam, me? I'm you like, where is that? That's my Kim folk. <laughs> That's man. Hey, that, that, that's blood right there. Cause it, like, while you was talking, it, I didn't reel it back in. I just refocused it all. Mm. I didn't. I didn't even pull it back in. Mm. That hunter is still there. Still I there. just hunt this one mm-hmm. every day. If I'm Tom, she's Jerry. Sheesh. So you never catch. Sheesh. I catch her, let her go. Catch her again, let it go. Catch her again. <laughs> Tom and Jerry had how many seasons, dog? Yeah. It never was like, well, Tom finally caught Jerry and ate him. <laughs> right. It's Tom and Henry now. Right? Like no, Tom and Jerry was the same cat chasing the same mouse over and over again. And look, and look, any man can satisfy a woman for a night. It take a special man to satisfy a woman for a lifetime. I don't heard that one hey, before. Boy. I like that one. What? Yeah. You you built different if you can satisfy her for a lifetime. Mm. It's, it take more work. I can woo you, wine you, and dine you tonight. Oh, and oh. I, I, 48 I, hours? Out. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After 48 hours, I got this. I got you. It's only you going to trick a little bread and do, okay, cool. Yeah. But to keep her attention. For life? My wife the other day, because uh, 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 last week I spent, in in Houston going to the Squire program like I told y'all about with yeah. my son Nathan and then we stopped in uh we uh we stopped at a car charger uh because I got a Tesla so we stopped at the car charger and while we was charging it up I hit Juliet up and the phone like went and it automatically picked up like it didn't even fully ring and she was like I was just stalking you Mm. She was like, I was looking at where is the dot? Where, uh, is, where is my man? When is he coming home? I said, you was stalking me because you love me. Mm. And she was like, that's just exactly like, I need you home. Mm. Like, like, there, like there is a, a woman. You don't need women. Yeah. There is a bad chick in the world who wants to know where I am at all times mm-hmm. and how much time is it going to be before I'm back in her arms. After 24 years, I still got her doing that. I'm winning. Yeah, you're killing it. I'm winning. And I, I don't even, I don't know how these cats when the other countries be having multiple wives and stuff. Like, I couldn't even. I can't That's do a lot it. to manage. That, brother. I got to deal with like four monthly cycles. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you lining them all up based on the lunar calendar. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't even know how you would navigate that. It, nah. it it is, you know, y'all have heard me talk about this. This is my, you know what I mean? This is my third time. I keep coming back to the beauty of monogamy. Mm. The beauty of having one person know you in a way no one else in the world ever will. And I like it. Even though I had this highly promiscuous background, when, when I came with Juliet, most people have no idea how to plan a date that builds connection with a hundred engaging dating cards, skip the small talk and get straight to the real conversation. Let's take the dating game to the next level. Click the link in the description and use discount code clips for 10% off. I told y'all my biggest regret is that I didn't save myself for her, right? Yeah. However, what I can say is no one's ever had me. There is no woman that has ever had me emotionally like Juliet has had me. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. So even though I wasn't a virgin physically, when I came into my union with Juliet, I was a virgin emotionally. Mm. And I was still able to give her a piece of me that I've never given another woman. And that level of exclusivity and being able to have that for the rest of my life, mm-hmm. exclusive to her, I can call that girl on the phone, and by my tone, she will know if I've eaten or not. Boy, I thought you was going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, literally, oh, I'll call her, and, 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 and she'll be like, how's everything going? I'll be like, day's good, da 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 And she'll be like, you haven't eaten, have you? Mm. I'm like, nah, we got up this morning and started running, da 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 She was like, call me back after you eat. Mm. Off the tone, mm. she knows I'm very short when I don't eat. 
Yeah. So, so I ain't trying to get used to no new chick, no boo chick, no sugar mama that's like, wh- why you, why your tone like that, daddy? I ain't explaining this to you. I I, I'm, I'm, I'm 25 years invested. A quarter of my life yeah. is in one woman and I'm going to give it up for a night with you. I'm, no, that's not happening. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I understand. Like, like we was talking about earlier. You know, I pledged Kappa. I, 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 I ran amok. I did my thing in them streets. I was for the streets. <laughs> <laughs> it's the voice, dog. Mercs me every time. Look, Craig got a movie voice that is just on command, and I'm dead. This summer, <laughs> McCray is hey, for the man. streets. We got to get that sound bite. For the streets. Yeah. I was for the streets. Yep. So I, I understand. I think some of it is a mindset shift, too, though. Because if, you're, if, you, if you only see women as either an object or a compliment, like a trophy to add on to you, then yeah, your success is going to look for that. Your success is gonna look for like, yo, I need a new level of objectivity. Who can I objectify at the million dollar mark? Cause I could only take advantage and objectify, you know, uh, these girls in this lounge at this amount of money, but now I got this money. I can I can objectify the girls at the red carpet party. You know what I'm saying? At the Grammy party. So you're still objectifying. It's just a different level of it. Yeah. And then Facts. when you look at yourself and look at women as just like an object to adorn you, like, do you make me look better? Then yeah, you're gonna think that when you get more money. You're gonna mm-hmm. think like, cause that's all they're there for. It's like, yo, yo, I'm flying, you ain't. Right. You got to step you up. Right, 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 and right. I, I'll be honest. When we moved to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? We was young, and my wife got to looking around like, oh, they really doing something out here. Like, he, he just going to Walmart, and the, the wolves is out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So At Walmart. You know what I feel me? Atlanta yeah. was there. So, she, yeah, you know, yeah. it was like, hey, we can have that real talk conversation where it's yep. like, hey, bet. Don't even sweat it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get it together in these particular areas but that wasn't pressure I'm putting on her. It's just no. her want to be like, all right, I see what's happening. Yeah, I yeah, tell yeah, her. I'm yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. was out there today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Tim is cracking up. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, so, Tim, let, me, so, let, me, let me ask well, you this, well, Tim. Because for reference, these guys have both been married for at least at least 15 years. I think 15 yeah. for you, Lecrae, and then how many for you? Tim? 24. 24. Okay, yeah. so it is a group of guys out there that are looking for long-term relationships. They're yeah. hoping to be in those long-term relationships as you guys are. For sure. And right now, they are engaging in uh, serious dating, looking mm-hmm. for the long-term commitment. Mm-hmm. And maybe they haven't found their woman, mm-hmm. and they're thinking, well, in between time for me finding the right woman, I can still kind of dabble in the streets until I find the right one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how important, or is sexual discipline important before you get married? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, practically, I'm gonna let you t- answer this, yeah, for but sure. I'll just say this. There's a practical, and then there's a spiritual. So. I'll say practically there's benefits to abstinence and abstaining, right? But then there's also, what do you subscribe to spiritually? Because if you really believe what you say you believe spiritually, like, like you, you're accountable to that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely correct. Yeah. What, yeah. I, what I would say, because uh, I've, you know, I, I was a young adult pastor for four years, counseled over 4,000 hours. You, you name a situation a young adult could be going through in the dating season, I was I, w- I was in the throes of it with them, so I understand how to how to help them navigate this. What I realize is that um, most people don't understand the practical side mm. of the discipline and how it impacts your long term relationship if Oof. you're seeking to get married. Boy, now if you're an individual that's never that never wants to be married, you're on this polyamorous type deal, <laughs> and and y- you you listening to some studies about how we were always meant, you know, men are just wired uh, uh, to have multiple women and society has, is the one that tried to bring us into just having these monogamous relationships, then you're gonna tune me out right now, right? Eat your red pill and tune them out. Right, 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 right. But here's the thing, 
If you're saying I want exclusivity with one person for the rest of my life, then while you are single and in that dating process, you are training your body on how it's going to respond once you get married. Mm -hmm. If you hold all the way up to I do, don't think those words convinced your body boy, to stay monogamous. Boy. That is not the damn case. Boy. If you hold all the way up to I do, you meant it with your mind, your body going to say, I'm sick of this vagina. Because they hold to the bachelor body. What? <laughs> right, right. They say, I got it all of my system. Yeah, 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 right. And you did. Yeah. You, you got it out for the first, for the next 18 months before you have the affair with your coworker. You got it out for the first 24 months before you got online and found an escort that you liked because you've been following her IG and she giving everybody head. You like, I want in on that. I stay current. <laughs> I'm like, this happened? <laughs> so, so, so what I'm saying is you have to discipline your body while you are single. You abstaining from sex as a single person is actually showing honor to the spouse you haven't even met yet. Because mm -hmm. what you're saying is, I believe all things being equal that we're going to have a rich and fulfilling success, uh, sex life. But in the event that I have to live out the worst part of my vows, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in rich, for richer or for poor, to death do his part. In the event that I have to walk out the worst part of our marriage, I'm already disciplined my body to be able to deal with that. If you fall ill for an extended period of time and you're not even capable of being intimate with me. My body hasn't been so all over the place that I won't be able to pull it back in. Because I trained it as a single person, I'll be able to train that in our marriage as well. Mm. When you are having my children and these children are, are in your body and making you feel all types of ways and you're fatigued and our sex life goes from like three, four times a week and now it's like maybe once every two weeks, depending on how you feel. I can pull that back in because I disciplined that in me before I even met you. That was my gift to you before you even showed up. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, there, there, this is, there's a practical side to that that is very, very powerful. The spiritual side of that is that if there's no conviction in you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and that's the paradigm we all come from. Other people got other paradigms. This is our paradigm, and we've been unashamed on it. But if you have that spiritual paradigm you know that your body was purchased. Like he didn't just, he didn't just like die on the sin to save your soul, uh, die on the cross to save your soul. He literally purchased your body mm. with his blood. It's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. You don't get to do whatever you want to with it. That's just contextual to what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so we have all these affections and we have all this lust and we have all this kind of stuff, but you, you need some nails because mm. you're going to have to crucify it. You're going to have to kill it. 